hello hello welcome back so we already covered the major chunk of differentiation and so whatever is left whatever wasn't covered in the previous videos i will be covering them now all right so let's say there's some function y equals minus x squared plus 4x which would look something like something like this all right so this curve reaches some maximum value and let's say this is some x value t and so this is this at a certain point t this graph reaches its maximum value before it uh, the graph is increasing and after it the graph is decreasing right so this is a point that we call a turning point or a vertex and it is called uh, it is given this name because before it the function is increasing and after it the function is decreasing or vice versa right so how do we compute this well if we differentiate this we know that the differential gives the the gradient at, at any point so minus 2x plus 4 now notice that at the turning point the gradient would be 0 right in this case before it the gradient is positive but it's decreasing and then after it the gradient is negative and it is becoming more negative right so if we set the differential equal to zero we will get the point where the gradient is zero or in short the turning point so minus 2x plus 4 equals 0 x equals 2 right so at x equals 2 which would be minus 4 plus 4 2 which would be 2 comma 4 this certain graph reaches its maximum value and this is what's called a turning point right and if you want to find any turning point what you do is find the differential and set it equal to zero and to give you sort of a real life example of it uh, let's say there's some car that's moving backwards however the driver is pressing the pedal so uh, it wants to move forward right and its graph will be something like this right that is the displacement time graph right so the turning point in this case would be useful because this turning point indicates the time where the car came to a stop right so if a car is moving backwards and after some instant it is moving forward you would agree that at some instant the car would be momentarily at rest so that point is indicated by this turning point i right? notice that before it the gradient of displacement time which is velocity is negative so in the backward direction and after it it is positive and increasing so the car is moving forward faster and faster right now let's say I look at this point one and let's erase these right so at the point one my y value is 3 and let's say let's say I the question wants uh, ask me to find the equation of the normal at this point now what is normal a normal is simply the perpendicular to the gradient right so we know that the gradient function is minus 2x plus 4 if we input 1 into this minus 2 plus 1 this will give us 2 so we know that this the gradient of this is 2 and recall from coordinate geometry that if and if there is another line that is perpendicular so m1 into m2 should equal negative 1 right so we know that gradient the gradient of the tangent is 2 so the gradient of the normal mn should be negative 1 half right now in order to get equation of any line you need two things a you need the the gradient and b you need a point now we know that this normal passes through this point 1 comma 3 so let's use this to calculate the plus c value so 3 equals negative half 1 plus c c would equal uh, 3.5 and so our equation becomes minus 1 over 2x plus 3.5 all right so now let's consider a function x x minus 2 x minus 4 and this will look something like something like this Right, this is 2 
this is for something like this. Let's expand this. So x square minus 2x, x minus 4, and x cube minus 4x squared minus 2x squared plus 4x, which is x cube minus 6x squared plus 4x. Sorry, this will be this will be 8x. All right, so let's try to find the turning point of this. So dy dx will be 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. And let's solve this through the quadratic formula. So I put this in the calculator and it says that uh, if we equate it to 0, the, it will be at x value 3.15 and at x value 0 0.845, right? So you're getting two values and this should not be surprising. So 0 0.1, 0 0.845 lies somewhere over here and 0 0.315 lies somewhere over here. So it makes sense that you're getting two x values that there are two turning points in this curve. But what you would realize is that the these two turning points, they're sort of different. The nature of these are sort of different. This is sort of a maximum point and this is sort of a minimum point uh, in that in that region around this area, right? So how do you exactly determine when uh, when which turning point is a sort is a maximum and which turning point is a minimum? So what you do is you take the second differential. So d2y over dx squared will be 6x minus 12x. Uh, so this is d2y. Uh, this is the second differential. Now let's plug in our values. So let's take the first turning point, which is, which would be 0 0.845 equals negative 12, and the second would be uh, 6 multiplied by 3.15 minus 12. Right. I do not need to compute this exactly because the exact value of that is not really of my concern right now. What really is of my concern is whether the values are positive or negative. So this value would be a negative value evidently and this value would be a positive value. Now what's the significance of this? Whenever your second differential is a negative value, it is a maxima, right? The reason being that uh, that your uh, gradient is decreasing, right? Before the point, it is positive, but decreasing. After the point, it is negative and decreasing, right? So since your gradient is decreasing, if your d to y dx squared is negative, this simply indicates that your gradient is decreasing, and hence this is a maximum point. And by the same argument, if your second differential is positive that means that your gradient your okay so this is a better representation of gradient your gradient is increasing right and if it's increasing then that means this must be a minimum right all right so this was maxima minima and determining the nature of the curves so the last thing i would like to briefly talk talk about would be trigonometry differential of this now, weirdly, the differential of trigonometric functions is not in AS, AS level math, but it is in O level math, so I would cover it in the same video. It just setting out some basic rules. The differential of sine x is cos x, and the differential of cos x is sine x, is negative sine x, right? Just looking at the graphs of sine and cos, it should sort of make sense. You know, at the start, the gradient is the maximum and at pi over two, it becomes zero. And this is what a cos curve also looks like. Similarly, when you look at the gradients of the cos curve, initially it's at zero, just like the sine curve, and then it's decreasing and it reaches its maximum value at pi over two, just like a negative sine curve. Right, so, these are your basic trigonometric differentials that you must know and there are more of them they're listed in the the mf19 booklet the one thing that i would like to talk about is the is pfa right so if you have something like let's say sine 2x to the power of 5 and you want to differentiate this 
how would you do it right so pfa is power function angle right so the way i would differentiate this is first drag down the power so let me draw an arrow here first drag down the power so it becomes five and this becomes four so our normal power rule and then take the differential of the inside which would be so the differential of cos 2x just forget the 2x for now the differential of sine 2x forgetting the 2x differential of sine would be cos so cos 2x and then differential of the angle which in this case is 2 right so our differential would be 10 sine 2x to the power 4 cos 2x 2oi interchangeably use theta and theta and x but this uh, this is our differential right and this sort of comes from the chain rule and that's it yeah bye bye